Hi, Michelle. Welcome, everyone. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, I think I'm going to, if it's OK with everyone, I'm going to enable the waiting room just so I don't have to keep clicking people in. Yeah. OK. I also have that capacity, so I'll keep an eye on the chat and stuff if you're going to be screen Thank sharing you. so I can help monitor that. Thank you, Alice. I appreciate that. All right, I'm going to head out. Bye, everybody. Bye, Nell. Bye, Nell. It was so lovely seeing your face. I hope I get to see you again soon. Yeah, you too. Bye, Nell. Bye. For everyone joining us, if you have the capacity and the comfort, um, if you're willing and able to turn on your screen, uh, it'd be lovely to see you. But if you're not able to or don't have the capacity, we understand as well. It's just nice to be able to engage back with you. Hi, Shannon. Hi. Nice to see you <laughs> there. We get legit excited to actually see people's faces. It's so nice. <laughs> I teach online, so it's just really hard sometimes to just see these black boxes of names mm -hmm. all the time. But Hi, Michelle. Yay. Ooh, is, are those legit <laughs> records? Wow. Yes, they are. <laughs> I, I have a whole thing up there. Yeah, I have a wall, but it's over on the other side. Uh, <laughs> this is just the paraphernalia wall. So <laughs> that's. Yeah. I think we'll wait maybe another minute or two. We, we have a couple more people who were registered, but um, if they don't hop on within the next couple of minutes, we'll just kind of get moving and grooving, I think. How's everyone's first week coming. going? Thumbs up from Michelle. <laughs> the snow. Ugh. How are we feeling? That's... That was rough yesterday. Yep. <laughs> there's the Facebook post that I saw. There's, there's two types of people in this weather. There's the Elsa, the snow but never bothered me anyway. And then the <laughs> cat bundled up in the blankets of, I don't want to leave. Mm -hmm. I am definitely the Elsa running outside making snow angels as it's coming down. Oh, that's awesome. And my wife is very much the, no. <laughs> it's a good balance six, then though, right? Six bundles. <laughs> 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 All right, wait one more minute and then we'll get started. I don't wanna I don't wanna wait too long just because I know everyone has really busy lives and I'm really thankful that everyone made the time today. So thank you for that. Our program director was going to try to hop on as well just to say hi to everybody, but I'm not sure if he's actually going to be able to make it or not because he had some competing stuff going on. They're always so busy. I know. I know. I apologize in advance too. I'm working from home today. My kids are coming home soon. My dog's barking downstairs. You know, life, right? Real life. <laughs> Social work life. Mm hmm. It, yeah, it never ends. It doesn't. Okay. I think we should get started. What do you think, Alice? Sounds like a plan. Okay. Well, welcome. Thank you so much, Michelle and Shannon. It's so lovely to be able to actually see you and to talk with you today. Um, so we have some, some pieces of presentation that we're going to do, but I think it just in the beginning, I'd love to tell you kind of who we are. Um, and just hear a little bit about you, what you're, what you're all about, and then we'll, we can kind of get into the program. We can tell you a little bit about it. We can answer whatever questions that you have. Um, so I'm Beth Crow. I'm the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Field Education and Programming over here in the School of Social Welfare. Um, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I do a lot of field stuff, so I mainly work with the seniors, but around admissions time, I'm very involved uh, with the application process and with everything. So you'll see me a lot more senior year uh, with your field placements, but um, it's been, I've been in this position for about four years now, three, four years. Um, and I love it. I learn a lot from the students. Um, it's just kind of one of those things where 
social work keeps evolving and all of the different topics that are hot topics keep evolving and changing. And so it's fantastic um, to just be in the school, to be able to kind of keep a pulse on what's actually going on, to be a piece of, of how to change the things that need changing um, and to work with the students. I really I love working with the students. Um, I teach a seminar also in senior year. So you'll see me senior year if you decide to um, do the program with us. And seminar is basically, again, all about field. Once you're in your internships, it's how is field going? What are the challenges? Um, what are some things that are going awesome? What are some things that are totally freaking you out or that you have no idea how to kind of handle and deal with and navigate? Um, so it's kind of its own like support group, which is really awesome. I find that the students really love that. Um, so that's a little bit about me and who I am. I come from a clinical background. Uh, so before I was in this position, um, I was a clinical social worker, uh, outpatient psych. I did outpatient psych for about eight years, um, which I loved. I loved being able to do individual therapy. I mainly worked with people with schizophrenia, but I had a lot of people with depression and bipolar disorder, kind of all of those, um, those the, the mental health world. Um, and I ran a group also over there, which I loved. I did a little bit of addictions in the past, um, which was also really, really rewarding experience. Um, then I decided that I needed a break <laughs> after eight or nine years from the clinical world. So I came back to UAlbany actually as a grad student, as a PhD student. Um, it's about nine years later and I'm still a PhD student, but that's because as you know, life happens, right? <laughs> So life happens and you're still a social worker throughout all of that life. Um, so that's just kind of a little bit about me. And now, I'm, now I, like I said, I'm the assistant director of the undergrad program, which has been awesome. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Alice, did you want to kind of talk about you a little bit? Sure. Uh, so my name is Alice Osterhout. I, um, I came in uh, in the MSW PhD dual degree program. Uh, I finished my MSW in 2021, and now I'm just working uh, on my PhD. Not that it's a just, uh, there's a lot of work that goes on into that. I'm currently working on my comprehensive essay uh, and then dissertation, which is a lot of reading, writing uh, forever, forever and ever. Um, but at the same time, what I do is I do some work for the university and the program, uh, I help out with admissions, and I also have started teaching some of the classes um, in the undergrad program in particular. So um, if you join us, uh, hopefully I'll get to see some of you in those classes, uh, human behavior in the social environment. One I've taught and uh, currently teaching social welfare policy in the U.S., uh, which is really fun and exciting. So uh, I just love working with students. It's always really been my passion since I was in high school to be a teacher. So it's really nice to come full circle and make it back here. So awesome. Thanks, Alice. So Michelle and Shannon, I'd love to hear from you a little bit about who you are, what brings you to the webinar today? What are you hoping to kind of gain? Um, what do you what questions might you have that you wanna that we want to delve into? Um, so I know it's always awkward to be like, who's going to go first? Um, so Michelle, you're up on my screen first, if you're willing, if you're willing and, and um, able, if you could just introduce yourself if you'd like to. Sure. Um, I'm Michelle. I actually just sent in my application to UAlbany uh, School of Social Welfare yesterday. Yay! So <laughs> it's on its way. Um, currently, I'm at SUNY Ulster, so I'll be transferring. I have a year done at SUNY Ulster, but I feel like you Albany is my place I need to be so I'm making the transition early Great. um and I want to become a social worker obviously but I want to do in psychiatric facilities or residentials with hopefully like children adolescents I have a lot of personal experience with psychiatric hospitals being inpatient <laughs> that way so now I want to do it the other way and mm -hmm. provide the treatment that way so that's that's the end goal and I you Albany is perfectly placed uh, so it has a lot of opportunity up there. So I'm really excited and looking forward to hearing back. <laughs> great. Thank you, Michelle. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing. Hi, Shannon. If you feel like Hi. sharing, that'd be great. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so like Michelle, I'm actually in the student at um, St. Francis College. And I recently switched my majors to social work. I started out as a nursing major. So 
Yeah, and I'm hoping to transfer to Albany this fall semester coming up. And I know around the same time I kind of get in soon, I will have to apply to the social work program. So that's I'm kind of like getting a head start on everything. And I'm hoping to submit my application soon. I pretty much have everything finalized. And um, I'm hoping to become a child like therapist, a counselor in that sort of field. And so really for me to start working towards it, I've just been working the after school program and just familiarizing myself with, you know, children of different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. So as you're already seeing, I know there's only two of you, but we've already talked about several different kind of kinds of social work and different things that you can do with that. Um, so definitely with social work, mental health is a big one. Um, being able to work with foster care and with children, um, marriage and family therapy, um, kind of all of that. You can you can do all of that with social work. And I think that's refreshing for people to hear because sometimes they think you have to have a psych degree um, in order to actually do counseling. And you don't. You can do counseling. We, we prepare you really well in our program, in the undergrad program, and then in the grad program. Um, you can even have your own private practice as a social worker doing therapy and counseling. Um, and so it sounds like both of you are kind of kind of definitely where, where we need to be in terms of the populations that we work with, in terms of the kind of work that you wanna do. Um, so that's really exciting. Great, yeah, thank you. Um, I kind of wanna just talk for a little bit. Let's just talk. <laughs> and, then, and then I'll pop up the PowerPoint. We can kind of go through some of the logistics, but um, it sounds like, so both of you are going to be your sophomores. You would be juniors next year. Is that correct? I'm, I'm a freshman, so I'm going freshman, to be a sophomore. Right. Getting head start. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I'm a right, freshman as that. well. <laughs> okay. So I'll be coming in with this, uh, my sophomore. Because I looked at the credit sheet. I've been like stalking your website and like <laughs> doing my research on my end. And I probably will come in as like a sophomore. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So this is going to, so I will, I'll kind of go through the application process too with you. It sounds like Michelle, you already applied. Um, and so that's, that's something that for sure, it's a two-year program. And so what we do is it's it's typically people's junior year and your senior year. Um, so it's like kind of the last two years of your education. Um, and junior year is all about getting all the courses, a whole bunch of courses that you need to take. Uh, and then senior year, it's courses and internships. So you actually have a full year of internship in our program. Um, which is really neat and very unique because if you kind of think about some of the other schools and, and even within our school, some of the related professions, a lot of human services professions um, like psych um, and other, other majors, they actually don't require that you have um, internship experience. Uh, but so for social workers, because we are, it's a practice degree. So we really want to make sure that our students are competent and ready to go. Um, and so we have, as, as part of our program, we actually have a full year that's required of internship, which is so beautiful because that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where you're, you're learning about all these social work concepts and all the things that you want to do, all these skills that you need to practice um, in your junior year. And then senior year, you actually get to practice them on real live people. Um, <laughs> and so it's really exciting. Field is, is really where I think a lot of students end up just loving senior year because they actually get the experience that they're that they're really looking for and they get to practice all of those skills. But I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself too because we're talking about you know junior and senior year. Um, and I haven't really told you much about us, right? And the school and the program. Um, so I am gonna I am gonna pop up the presentation because I will just talk and talk if I don't have structure. So I know myself well enough. Self-awareness is a huge piece of social work. And I know myself pretty well. Um, so once I pop this up, I won't be able to see faces um, just because of the weird way that my computer is right now. But if you have a question or if you want to stop me at all as I'm talking, please just speak up and say something so that um, so that I can kind of stop. Uh, I'm going to share the presentation. OK, so now I can't see faces. So um, is everyone able to? Okay. Is everyone able to see the presentation? Is it popping up? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay. So I'll probably go back and forth a little bit between the presentation and then kind of talking a little bit um, and seeing faces because we can't stare at a screen for too long. Um, so we talked a little bit. Stop it. 
we talked a little bit about, um, you know, the, the kinds of things in social work that you might want to do. What we actually didn't talk about is the fact that social work, one of our core values is social justice. And so social justice for us is really helping oppressed people, people who are marginalized, people who have voices, but the voices have been silenced. Um, so think about our communities of color, think about the LGBTQ plus population, um, people who are elderly, uh, kids, people with trauma histories, people with mental health uh, and addictions histories, right? So um, all of the, the, the um, people in society who are stigmatized, who are really marginalized, um, who are discriminated against. Uh, so as social workers, and, and we tie that to isms, right? So we think about racism, we think about heterosexism, ableism. Um, that's what we do as social workers. That's kind of the big picture stuff. And those are the kinds of people that we're helping. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop sharing just for a second because I really need to see faces. Um, here we go. Let me see your faces. Uh, as I say that, what's kind of popping up for, for you? What are you thinking as I'm kind of talking about that? Um, well, like for me, I mean, when I was looking up at like social work programs to apply to and you Albany came up, and one of the things I noticed was the fact that you, on like the main page, it was the fact that you guys mentioned social justice as something that was very important to the school. And that's, you know, on my application, I even mentioned that. And it's like, wow, you know, you really don't see other schools mention that or really mm -hmm. acknowledge the fact that really as social workers, a big part of our job is social justice mm -hmm. and being those people to advocate for those who don't know how to advocate for themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Shannon. Yeah. Yeah. I know in school, we talk a lot about like cultural competence and like mm -hmm. all of that. And it's really important. And my teacher, she took a whole chunk of time to really talk about like how that all wraps up into your job as a human service mm -hmm. professional, anytime, whether you're yeah. a nurse, <laughs> a social yeah. worker, a teacher, it's in everyone's career, but especially in social work. And I also found it with the injustice you guys put on social justice out there. And I also mentioned it in my mm -hmm. application because that stood out and really spoke volume of like, we care and mm -hmm. we know and we're acknowledging mm -hmm. that this is a big deal and advocating like you said, and I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Great, great. So you're home, you two are home. <laughs> Um, but really, that's so important. And I think a lot of times because the, there is such a misconception about what social workers are, who, what we do, what the profession is. And I think, you know, honestly, media probably doesn't help that. But I think a lot of people kind of come into this thinking like, oh, social workers, you take wait, you take kids away or you, um, there's just kind of this this even the stigma about us in the profession. Um, and so it's really important that we really put out there, actually social justice is one of our core values. Um, competence, integrity, dignity and worth of the person, service. Um, these are all really, these are all tenets of our profession. Um, and so I think it's important to kind of start there with, you know, what is social work and, and what do we do? Um, and so now I can get into a little bit more about, about the school and kind of what the program looks like. Um, Alice, I'm sorry, I'm just blabbing. Do you have anything to say, anything to add? No, <laughs> okay. Please feel free always to just like, to just say. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna screen share again so I won't be able to see your faces. Okay, so just some of the things, 10 most common social work occupations, which actually we've talked about several of them already. Um, a lot of times people do actually, um, uh, VA, we have a lot of people who like to work um, with veterans in our program. Um, I find that a lot of our students love working with kids or think that they wanna work with kids. <laughs> and then sometimes they get to field and say, oh, this is very different than I thought. Uh, but working with kids is always a big one, child and families. Um, and in schools, we have a lot of people who wanna work in schools, um, counseling, kind of all of these, all of these things. Um, and so we talk about levels. So some of you might already be kind of familiar with the with the levels of social work. We have the micro, the meso, and the macro. So when you think about micro, you think about individuals, families, groups. 
Um, when we think about meso, we think about kind of in the organization, organizational level kinds of things. Um, and macro, we think about policy, we think about community building, things like that. Um, and so I think it's important to mention that too, because a lot of people do want to kind of go right in and then say, okay, I want to do um, counseling or I want to do therapy. Um, and that's fantastic. That's great. We can do that as social workers. But all of the levels are interconnected. So when you're working with individuals, you're going to be working at the organizational level because you yourself are going to be in an agency that's working with them. You're going to have to collaborate with other agencies to get the services that you need. Um, macro level policies, policies impact all of our clients, they impact all of us at an individual level. Um, and so when you're working with just the person, you're not just working with the person, you're working kind of at all levels. And so it's just kind of important to remember um, that piece of it. But so some of the things you could do with a micro level clinical social worker, psychiatric social worker, which Michelle had mentioned, child and family social worker, um, which is kind of related to what Shannon had said, medical substance use, um, at the mezzo, kind of, again, that agency, organizational level, so school social workers, community social workers, macro level um, policy. So the cool thing, too, about our school is that um, we are literally, I'm going to stop sharing again. I'm just going to go back and forth between sharing and not sharing because I need to see your faces. We are um, literally within walking distance of the Capitol which is so neat. So if you were a policy person, this is your jam. Um, and we, we do a lot of advocacy work. Yeah, Alice, <laughs> we do a lot of advocacy work too. So there's actually specific days that we have students, that we take students down to the Capitol and we actually talk with the legislature people. So we talk with the, um, the oh my gosh, they're escaping me right now, the assembly people, um, and kind of for, for whatever policy. So we advocate for whatever policy is kind of going on. So we've done a lot of mental health advocacy and legislation. We've done a lot of profession stuff too, um, in terms of um, like loan forgiveness and things like that. So whatever, whatever issue is kind of on the table, we go to the Capitol and we actually talk to the people who make the policy to try to influence them and, and educate them on like, this is how this is impacting real people. Um, so it's neat that we're that we're here and that we're so close to the Capitol. Um, I'm gonna screen share again. Um, so undergrad and grad, so BSW is what, is what undergrad is, it's the bachelor, um, the bachelors, and then M is the masters. So the difference between a BSW and an MSW, as a BSW social worker, <clears throat> you can do social work as a BSW, right? So this is what we call, again, a practice degree, where we're teaching you some of the skills that you need to be a social worker. Um, so you can do work at the undergrad level if you don't have your master's. It's just the work looks a little different. Um, so at the BSW level, it's more like case management typically, um, like health aids typically. Um, it looks like connecting people with resources, kind of being a bridger. That's the kind of work that we'll typically get at the undergrad level. Um, if you graduate with a master's degree, that's when you get to do your therapy, your counseling, um, school social work, nonprofit management. Um, you'll still always be doing some level of resources, case management, things like that, just because that's what we do as social workers. We connect people to the resources they need. Um, but it's a little different in terms of what you can actually do with each degree. And the salary difference is, is a, an actual big difference. Um, and so the undergrad program is fantastic, but I always encourage people, keep going, get your master's. Um, and even beyond that too, which we'll talk about later, there's, you know, you could get a PhD too, if you wanted. Oops. This is going so fast. Okay, so here we are. Here are some actual people, some students, some professors and faculty from our program. Um, so I'll talk a little bit, I'll read over the mission in a second. Um, and I'll talk a, a little bit more too about our location, the programs that we have. Um, we are actually, since both of you are transfer students, you might not actually know this, that we have several different campuses at UAlbany. So the UAlbany main is campus. Anyone else, I just want to interject, is anyone else yeah. only seeing the micro, meso, macro level? Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I wanted to point that out too. Yeah. Uh, I think we're seeing yeah, the wrong it's, share. It's just not, it's not working. It's okay, let's try again. Let's try again. My desktop is being kind of funky. So let's try again. Thank you for telling me that. I had no idea. Okay. 
Are we seeing the welcome to you Albany's SSW community? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is what I was blabbing about. Uh, so this is who we are. <laughs> and so um, for the students who are transfer students, we have several different campuses. And so the main campus is actually um, the one, it, it, it houses kind of what we call the uptown campus. Um, and we in the School of Social Welfare are on the downtown campus, which is only a couple miles from each other. Um, and you can actually take, we have buses that run, school buses that run from each campus. So you never have to like uh, drive yourself or pay yourself if you wanted to get to a different campus. But we're on the downtown campus. So again, we're closer to the capital. Um, and we're just kind of closer to the heart of Albany, which is uh, for me really exciting because again, that's what we do as social workers. We go into the communities that we're actually uh, working with. And so to have a school in a community where we're working is really important, I think. Okay. Um, oh, it keeps doing that. Maybe that happens every time. Are you seeing SSW mission? No. 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 no, so every time it skips, it won't actually let me share it. Um, okay, that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. It's okay. Um, no problem. So I'll just read over our mission and then we'll talk a little bit about um, our program. So mission, University at Albany School of Social Welfare is dedicated to the realization of a fair and just society and institutions that are diverse, inclusive, and equitable. Our students have educational and research opportunities to improve human well-being on local, national, and global levels. The SSW prepares students for successful careers in social work through coursework and research with internationally known faculty, hands-on experience with our community and state partner agencies and study abroad opportunities. So that's just, um, it's a mouthful. So I didn't want to have to say the mission, but um, I wanted to make sure that you that you knew, which it kind of sounds like already you had, you both had kind of looked at the page and you had known that. Um, so we have a couple undergrad programs. Are you seeing the undergrad SSW program slide? Yes. Okay, I'm just going to keep it here instead of doing the show. Uh, we have a couple different programs, but I thought we would talk about obviously our major program, um, the BSW major first, and then we'll kind of talk about the other ones. Um, but this is where I really want to spend most of our time so that I can answer whatever questions you actually have about the program that it sounds like both of you already applied to. Um, so our core requirements. So overall, the BSW is a 62 credit major. So that's a lot of credits. Um, and because of that, we actually don't require that you have a minor. So most majors at UAlbany require that you have a minor. But again, because ours is so credit heavy, um, you actually don't have to have a minor when you are a, one of our majors, which is kind of nice because um, it is a pretty intense program. There's a lot that goes on. Uh, so for your junior year, you're going to be taking human behavior in the social environment, which Alice had alluded to. Um, then social work practice one and two, I find students love those classes because, again, that's where you get to learn about uh, your actual skills. So how do I talk to this person? How do I really listen to hear what they're saying? How do I engage with them? How do I assess what's going on? How do I intervene? How do I evaluate? Those are the kinds of things you'll be learning um, in social work practice one and two. And then there's a research methods course as well. Um, so that's your junior year. And this is all kind of on top of obviously at UAlbany there is, um, there are other credit requirements. So in order to actually graduate, you need 120 credits total. And so you'll have to kind of do the other pieces of your education, which we call gen ed. Um, so those are like the social studies and the sciences and the math and like kind of the, the base requirement. Um, but on top of the base requirement, this is what I'm, this is the major requirements. Um, so senior year, as I was talking about, mainly I want to highlight fields because again, I think that's that's different um, than a lot of other majors is that you do have that full year, the two semesters, um, fall and then spring of field. So your field placement actually doesn't change. So you get to be in the same agency all year, which gives you a really nice opportunity to get to know the agency, to get to know the people in there, to really actually dig in and do really, really good deep work with the clients that are there. Um, and then obviously you're practicing your social work skills. So you're trying to figure out what am I awesome at? What are some areas that I maybe need to improve in a little bit or get a little bit more experience in? Um, 
There's also the social work practice classes along with that too, which again, those, those always go hand in hand because um, you're learning the skills and then you're applying it in field. And there's that seminar class that I already talked about where you get to kind of debrief what's going on in field, what's going well, what do you need help with? Um, how does this all relate to social work? How does this relate to theory? Kind of where we bring theory in. Um, yeah, so there's a whole bunch of courses that you'll take junior and senior year. I'm gonna stop for a second. Uh, does anyone have questions? No, I'm good. Okay. I have a question about the core requirements. Sure, yeah. So like my, oh, I guess in high school I did some credits and then at Ulster I did a bunch. So, and I'm, I sent my transcripts, so I'm sure you guys will all look at that. Mm -hmm. But like, I just, I guess I'm just wondering, like, how do you look at the credits that the person has done from their call, their previous college, and then that determines where they land, like, whether, okay, you don't have enough, so we're going to put you in freshman, or okay, you have a lot, so we're going to put you in sophomore. Does that, like, I guess, go into that? Okay, so let me answer and then tell me if I'm understanding or not understanding. Okay. Um, so kind of regardless of whether you're freshman or sophomore status, you have to have at least sophomore status in order to apply to the program. But the program happens specifically, it happens in your the full junior year and the full senior year. So whether you're able to like if you have enough credits as a freshman to actually be a sophomore and apply to the program, that's potentially fine. Um, but it's that full, it's the full two year program. Um, and what I find is that most of the time for freshmen applying, there's just not enough credits. So like you'll have to have had at least probably 55 or more or more college credits in order to then even be able to graduate on time. Um, does that make sense? Cause it's a two year program. And so there's yeah. 62 credits. Okay, so if you, I guess, fall short of the core requirements, mm -hmm. what would happen then? Like if we applied, let's say we apply to the uh, Bachelor of Science, Social Welfare, mm -hmm. and then they're told, okay, yeah, you don't have enough credits. What would, like, what would your major have to be before? Like, what would you I do in college you. before? Yeah, right. That's a great question. So um, anything related, right? So we have sociology as a major, we have um, human development as a major, we have psychology as a major. Um, what else would be potentially related? I'm trying to think. Um, anything, anything that would be related. And, and then you can kind of think ahead and look to see what courses am I going to be required to take as a social work student, um, and then potentially try to take some of those courses. Um, just because that will help to make your application look stronger already too, because you've already taken some of the courses we need you to take. The other thing I always recommend for people, which I'll get to in a second, is um, when we talk about CPSP, that program, um, that's a great way to actually ha get human services experience, but get credit for it. So you could actually take um, one of those CPSP courses so that you so that you are getting like almost like field and internship experience. Um, for either two credits or three credits, depending on, on what you do. And again, that makes your application look stronger too um, for when you come in to say, okay, well, you have all these courses that are that you've taken that are related to social worker that you're gonna need for the major and you have now human services experience. So kind of all of those things, like taking a major that's related and, and um, those those things will kind of help. Okay, that thank sense? you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Did I miss anything, Alice? trying to check myself here <laughs> okay I don't think so okay great thank you okay okay um is, is everyone are we still on screen share does everyone still see yeah. you're all good okay. great um so again this is this is part of our program so you'd be taking these classes junior year and senior year if you get into the program um Elementary base, so we, this is what, again, part of what we expect that you'll have by the time you graduate. Some of these classes you'll have already taken. So I, we find that a lot of students come in already with intro to psych, intro to soc. Um, and again, these are the classes that you might wanna try to take if you don't have enough credits to be a major yet. 
um, but you still absolutely want to be a major, um, these are some of the classes that you might want to think about trying to kind of take so that um, it'll position you really well for the major. I'm not going to go over all of them um, because we can send you the presentation in the future. Um, uh, and then what we call the advanced base. So even more classes that, that is part of our program that you'll take. So you'll take abnormal psych, uh, stats, a social psych, a perspectives on globalization. Um, so just generally, I just kind of want you to get a sense of the kinds of classes major specific that you'll be taking. Um, but the really fun stuff is this stuff. This is where people have a lot of questions about. So the BSW admissions criteria. Um, so we have the essay and that's all about, you know, what are, what are your strengths? What can you bring to the table? Um, but also what social issue might you be really interested in tackling? Um, so we already want you to be thinking as a sophomore, we want you to be thinking about social issues and why they're so important and what you're passionate about, um, about helping with. Uh, we'll look at your transcripts. So we typically look for a 3.0 average or above. Um, if you're a little bit lower than that, it's not, it's not to say that you're completely off the table, that we won't even look at your application. Um, but typically we are really looking at that 3.0 um, just because our program is really intense. <clears throat> there's a lot of academic components and there's that field component. So in senior year particularly, it's a lot to juggle. And we like to really make sure that you uh, are prepared and that you feel like you are ready to juggle. Um, so we do look for that 3.0. Um, or above, but again, we always we we always make kind of exceptions depending on the whole entire package, your application package. Um, and anything looks good again. Any progress that you have towards completing your elementary base, so that intro to psych, intro to social, those kinds of classes are really helpful if we know that you've taken those already. Um, and the CPSP classes, which we'll talk about in a second. Two references, so one academic and one professional. Um, if you have experience in the field that's a great professional person to go to, like whether you have volunteered somewhere or if you've been paid to do work um, in the human services field, that's always a really good professional reference. We do always have applications where people just haven't had the chance or the experience, especially with COVID. Um, some people just haven't had a chance or an opportunity to actually do work um, in the field yet. And so any professional reference will do as long as they can speak to your professionalism. Um, what does your work ethic look like? Are you on time? Do you get the tasks done? And anything that's kind of relevant to a human service profession, um, what kinds of qualities do you think uh, you would need to possess? And, and kind of having your professional person talk a bit about that um, and how, how that well suits you for a career in social work. Um, we always, again, look for volunteer or work experience in the human services field. It's always a plus. But again, especially with COVID, we understand if that hasn't happened. Um, so those are the main components. We, our application is due by March 15th of your sophomore year uh, for entrance into the fall of your junior year, because again, it's a full two year program. Um, and so there's a little link there for transfer applications. So for the transfer students, you do have to apply to the university first. Um, and then as part of that, they'll, there's like a supplemental, they call a supplemental application for social welfare. And, and that's when you'll do the social welfare application, but you have to apply to the university first. Um, I'm going to stop so that I can see your faces and ask and, and answer any questions. Okay. Any questions about the criteria, about the classes, the program? Um, not really, but it kind of just was kind of like what Michelle was asking. So mm -hmm. in the event that like, say, because we're transfer students, so we're going to most likely come in this fall and we obviously have to apply the spring semester and we don't have enough credits for the program. Do we wait for the next go around basically? Or like, how does that work? Yeah, yeah. So again, that's gonna potentially, depending on the number of credits that you have, that's gonna be a personal decision. So for some of you, like if you, if it puts you at a place where you're, you're maybe like just shy of having enough credits, but like we don't want you to have to stay an extra year to get your education done, right? So if you're if you're in a weird position where you don't quite have enough for the major, but you have a lot where you could graduate earlier, then um, it's up to you basically. So you could wait for the next cycle and just apply to the program, but just know that it is that full two years. So it's a full two year program. 
Um, so for some of you, you have to kind of think about financial aid. If you'll get, if you stay longer than the 120 credits, will you get that financial aid? Um, or will, you know, do you, are there other considerations or there scholarships that you kind of have to consider um, if you stay a little bit longer? Um, yeah. yeah. I wish I could be more specific with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, because I know for me, for example, because I started as a nursing major, I wasn't necessarily taking any social work classes besides like mm -hmm. one course I took was called a sociology of minority groups. Um, and so this semester is when I really started taking like my social work related classes. So that's like intro to psych and sociology. And so like, and then of course, gen eds as well. So like when I had called about like my transferring, like how that would work, especially when you mm -hmm. wanted to transfer into social work, she was like, like the best ad advice now is to not wait until next spring semester, but wait, um, apply this semester mm -hmm. and then try to come in my fall. And I'll mm -hmm. see whatever I can do to catch up to hopefully apply on time. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I think it's always worth if you're really just not sure, and especially because you don't really know how many credits yet you're actually transferring in. So you may end up transferring in exactly how many credits you think, or the university might say, like, nope, actually you you can't transfer that in, or you're only transferring in this amount. Um, but I would say, you know, apply, apply anyway, because then then it's up to the admissions committee to kind of say, okay, you know, realistically, can this person get this done within two years? Or does this look like it's going to be like a two and a half year or a three year program? If it's going to be a two and a half year program, we'll contact you to be able to kind of just say, thank you for the application. This is kind of where your credits fall. Do you want to move forward with this next year? Or, you know, kind of something like that. Um, but yeah, I would say probably just apply anyway. Um, if you're already kind of working on stuff. And then if you decide that you're gonna wait until next cycle, then like how exciting, <laughs> pretty much all of your application materials are already, you just have to resubmit next year, um, but you'll be able to kind of use the same application materials potentially. Um, yeah. Are there other questions about application process? Uh, yeah, so I think if I'm remembering the number correctly, um, you, <laughs> I think the core requirement was 32 credits, right? Something like that. Okay. Yes. So I, 32 for one of the cores. Yeah. Okay. So I have like, I spoke to like the transfer office that you, with you guys. And I was like, I was nervous about a couple of credits that I did because I go to SUNY Ulster. So I figured, okay, they're both SUNY schools. It should transfer over. Okay. But yeah. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> So I did email someone. They'd gotten back to me like, yes, everything will transfer over fine. I'd given them everything. Um, so realistically, I am a freshman, but I probably mm -hmm. will be coming with 40 credits that should all transfer over perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. So would that like leave me in an awkward position where it would be like, hey, this might take you longer or hey, you're OK, because I know I'm technically a freshman, like a first year student, mm -hmm. yeah. but I have 40 credits coming in. So I wonder how yeah. that would go with you guys. Yeah. So I'm thinking realistically, so the major is only 62 credits total. So 40 and 62 is 102, but you need 120 to graduate. So I would think that that probably, um, it won't position you well this cycle to be able to um, come in because 102 and then 120, that's 18 credits. Um, unless you make a really good case for like, I'm going to take those 18 credits over the summer or, um, you know, or you, or you plan on taking like a six course load or something. I mean, if you, if you're able to kind of address that in your application, um, it might be considered, but coming in with 40 credits for us, we're looking at it. Like we don't want, we don't want for you to feel overburdened because again, it's a really intense program. So we wouldn't want to kind of set you up um to to be overburdened does that make sense yeah I just I didn't know that prior to all of that so now yeah. none of that is in my application that's okay you can always add to it you can always yeah, add to your application for sure um Alice what are do you have thoughts about that either like is there a different way that you're looking at it so just a reminder just to clarify and if I missed something in it here so it sounds like you you completed your freshman year or you're completing your freshman year. Mm -hmm. And remember that 
really our our program you apply at the end of your sophomore year so you're ahead of the game mm -hmm. so you don't worry about that is that you you'll still be on time to complete within mm -hmm. the, the standard time frame mm -hmm. so don't worry about that you would transfer into u albany as a standard transfer student and then you'd apply to the bsw program at the end of your sophomore year like a traditional U Albany student. Mm -hmm. As long as you maintain that 3.0 GPA and the other standards, you'd be all good and golden. Um, you could even take a lot of those core courses, which you know, all, some of our professors like myself teach. Mm -hmm. you know, social welfare in the US is one of our, what we call feeder intro courses. So yeah. it's a non-major course, but a lot of our students who wind up becoming or are intended as majors take it. Mm -hmm. So is that helpful? Yeah, I'm just now like, oh no. <laughs> no oh, yeah, I'm sorry, one more question. Just to clarify, how much credits do we need, like theoretically in our sophomore year when we're applying? How much credits do we need to apply to the BSW program? So typically that would be, so if you've done freshman year, so if it's, 30 credits, right? 30 credits each year-ish, right? So 30, then 45. So by the time you're applying, you would have 45 plus credits, right, Alice? Am I doing that math right in my head? You would have 45 completed and completed, be yeah. in process of 15 oh, more. Yeah. Okay, thank you. But that's assuming you didn't take any four credit courses or some of those CPSP style one or two credit courses or mm -hmm. a four credit writing lab or something that throws off that metric. Okay, thank you. Because I, I, um, I know like last semester on my transcript, it shows that I completed 14 credits. And then this semester I'm set for, um, cause I did drop one of my classes and that was an additional extra credits. Um, mm -hmm. And this semester I'm taking 15 credits. And so that's like coming in, I would theoretically have about like almost like 29 credits basically. Mm -hmm. And then, yep. so going in, I would take my first at UAlbany, mm -hmm. I would have what, like most likely a 15 course credit load course. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, again, we wanna, um, and these aren't like hard and fast rules. And so I think that's why part of this is kind of difficult to be like, well, it could work or maybe it wouldn't work because everyone is so different. Um, credits are so different, right? But generally the admissions committee is looking to make sure that you are positioned well enough with credits that once you get to junior year, um, knowing that like, okay, it's a 62 credit major. So whatever credits you already have or have plus are in progress with plus 62 is going to be the 120 because you have to graduate with 120. So if you kind of think about it that way, you need typically between like 50 and 58 credits, I would think to, to really be considered like, okay, you're ready. You're, you're potentially ready to, to be in this program. Um, but so for Michelle, um, Great, but like you're ahead of the game now, right? So, and now you know, okay, so once I get to UAlbany, here's what I can do. I can declare a psych or a sociology or a human development major, look ahead and take all of like any any social work courses um, that you know that we need for our major. Again, that's gonna look really good on your application next year. Try the CPSP um, to get more human service experience, right? So that gets you credits, but it also strengthens your application. Um, so it might feel kind of like, oh man, like that's, that's a bummer right now. But for me, I'm like, great. Like you're hooked up with us. You're already connected. You already know what you need to do. Now you have a good path. Um, so I'm, ex I'm excited for you, uh, cause it seems like you're just so motivated and I love that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I have one more question. Don't ever so, be sorry, please. Um, I understand that like it's a two year program that you apply to. So people who aren't in the progress of trying to work their way into getting the two year program, what major are they? Are they a social welfare major or? Okay, I, okay, because I just wanted to. It's intended. So what they call it is your social welfare intended, intended but you okay. would be working on like a psych or a sociology or a human development. Like you'd be taking the coursework 
for kind of those things, but it's social welfare intended. Um, Alice, okay. is that kind of your understanding too? Yeah, um, and this is, again, my undergrad was uh, years ago. <laughs> I'm older than I look. Uh, I just turned 36, which I still don't understand. Uh, <laughs> But uh, what it comes up on transcripts and things is you don't actually declare your major till the end of your sophomore year, usually. So um, that's why we have you apply at the end of your sophomore year. While people can declare earlier, you don't have to. So that's what shows up on your transcripts and for uh, instructors is social welfare intended or psychology intended. Um, and that's what we would see. And if you're trying to get into a course that is restricted to a certain major, that's how that uh, would work. Okay, so like say for like um, me and Michelle who are transfer students coming in and we indicate on our transcript that we're like social work intended, they'll give us, because obviously like we can't register for our own classes yet at that point, they would put us in like social work intended courses. Okay, all right. Or yeah. you talk yeah. to your advisor and they'd right. help sort that out. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we have a cool advising system where we have, um, I work a lot with, her name is Valerie. She's fantastic. Um, she has a lot of the social work intended, social welfare intended majors. Um, and so you'll, you'll have an advisor who's specifically based on what major you think you want to be, they'll, they'll help you um, get into the classes that you kind of need to, to again, set you up for success. Um, so I think between using our website to kind of see, okay, these are the courses that would be good for me to take to, to position me really well to get into the program, um, plus your advisor, I think you should be pretty set. Anything else that's popping up as we're talking? Any questions or concerns? No, just for me, I think I might do what Michelle did and probably email like the trans transfer admissions mm -hmm. office to like mm -hmm. try to compare my transcript and like the courses I'm taking now especially mm -hmm. because of how like weird my situation is where I didn't start mm -hmm. as a social work major and just mm -hmm. to see if I'm on the track to be able to apply my sophomore year or I might have to probably see if I can like double up on a like add another course to be able to meet those make those like major requirements and those kind of things so just like double check and be sure but mm -hmm. I think regardless, either way, I'm still going to like apply to transfer to the school. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's a good plan. I think it's always good to try to try to double check, see what you think is going to transfer in and um, and then be able to talk with your advisor and kind of, again, go from there, like what positions me best. So hopefully the undergrad program is where both of you land. Um, but if not, if it's a weird credit situation or if it's like, you know what, I, I kind of am not sure now. Um, first of all, we have a minor, which is really exciting. So if you wanted to declare something different as a major, you could still do social welfare as a minor, which I can talk about again in a little bit. Um, but also we have an MSW program. So again, as I've, I've been kind of, um, yeah, <laughs> Alice is a huge proponent. Um, <laughs> so as I've been talking about, we're, we're talking mainly about undergrad because that's where you're at and that's where you're applying. Um, but we have a master's program. And so two things. I have to focus a lot. I have a lot of thoughts always kind of at once. Um, so the first thought is that we have a two-year MSW program. Um, so for people who are a psych major, human development, sociology, women's studies, like anything that's kind of like, you know, related, um, you'll be able to, to potentially be eligible for that two-year MSW program where you can get your master's in two years. For our our undergrads, so people who come in who are our social welfare majors, you are actually eligible to do what we call the advanced standing program. And that's a one year, you actually get your master's, your MSW degree in one year. And that's because again, our program is really intense in a good way because we really teach you all of the building blocks and the skills that you need to do. But because we have that one full year of internship, that's almost like thinking about it, like if you were in the MSW program, that would be like your first year of the internship. So your undergrad is basically the first year of internship. Um, so that if you complete our undergrad program successfully, then you're eligible to do the advanced standing program, with, which again is just um, getting a master's in one year. 
So that's a really nice perk of our program too, if you wanna kind of think ahead like, like that. Um, and if that helps you make a decision. Um, so even if you decide like, oh, you know what, it's just not right. The timing's not right. The credits aren't right, but you still really want to be a social worker. You can still be a social worker. We still have a master's program. It's a two-year program. But if you're with us in the undergrad program, um, you're eligible for that one-year master's program. Thoughts, questions about that? So like, yeah, in the case you, um, you don't wait for like the next cycle to apply to the BSW program, you declare like what a different major like psych or something you take the um requirements needed for like to get into graduate school with the msw yep. program and then it's yep. pretty much the same kind of thing yep. where it but it won't be the one-year option i'm assuming exactly yes okay. yep so if you come in with a different major um like a psych or a social uh so a sociology or something um you'll be eligible for the two-year program um yeah but yeah, so it's still an option. So again, it's like, you can, you can still be a social worker. Don't worry, <laughs> we've got you. <laughs> um, so actually, let me go ahead and screen share that again, because there is a little bit of information in the PowerPoint about that. Um, our MSW pro students come from all walks of life. I was actually yeah. a theater student in undergrad, so. Ah, that's perfect. Um, and I will share, I was a psych major, actually. I was not a social welfare major. I didn't even know about social work when I was in my undergrad. I also um, have had a couple of years in between me and my undergrad, um, but I didn't even know social work was a thing um, until my senior year of undergrad. And then it kind of blew my mind and I was like, whoa, that's really awesome. So I came in, I did the two-year program to get my master's um, because I came in with a psych major, so. Um, so the minor. So again, just in case, just in case, um, if you feel like you want to declare a different major because of a credit situation or just because you're kind of second second guessing, we do have a minor. So that's an 18 credit um, minor. And so you would take your major, and then the minor would be the 18 credits. And so th this is just kind of um, an example of the of the courses that would be in the minor. Um, so you can kind of look at that at your leisure. Um, and then what I was talking about was the CPSP, Community and Public Service Program. So again, this is where you can get your, you can actually get course credit for volunteering and getting real human service experience. Um, so we have RSSW, which is just kind of the, the code. I'm sure everyone's familiar with like different codes with your universities, um, but 291, so you could do two credits, it's 60 hours of community service, or we have 290, um, it's 100 hours, so it's a three credit. We also have a 390, so you can get an additional 100 hours. So again, for us in the major, we always look at this and say, oh, fantastic, like this positions you really well if you do something like this and then apply to our program. Um, but again, you don't necessarily have to have any volunteer experience in order to get in. I just learned way. from Sherry today that there is a one credit for 35 hours as well. Ooh, let's add that next time. Hold on. I don't know what the course number is, but she just came and spoke in one of my classes today. And for people who need just like that one credit, it exists. Awesome. That's super helpful because a lot of the time I have seniors who miscounted their credits and they're at 119 instead of 120 and they're supposed to be graduating. So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> As she likes to call it, it's the Hail Mary credit. Yep. That's totally because it can true. be added through the middle of March too. Oh, I didn't actually know that. We'll have to add that. Thank you, Alice. Yeah. So it's just, you know, since Shannon was talking about, you know, there was that one semester you had 14 mm -hmm. instead of 15, it felt relevant mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it can help you meet that missing one credit somewhere. Yes. I love that. Good thinking. Um, yeah, okay. Um, and then in addition. So yeah, let me stop there, sharing so I can um, see your face. Is there a specific email for transfer applications or is just through the admissions? You do through through admissions. So you're, okay. um, yeah, through your admissions and then there's that supplemental application. Um, but if you have questions, I always, I have to write it. Before yeah, because I, I was trying to do the um, same thing that Michelle did where she emailed someone. And so I just wanted to know like which person I, to email. I can, actually, I got the email off of you Albany's website. I went to the like main page and then it'll have like first year transfer, all those like little tabs. 
I put I press transfer and then if you scroll down and you go to where it says like the credits and stuff it'll have like the little admissions like you like here email us here and I just pasted that into my gmail and they answered back really quick so that's where you go thank you you're welcome thank you I actually didn't know that thank you Michelle (laughs) like I said I'm constantly on that website so (laughs) I know the website that's so funny I love it I love your dedication I love your energy thank you um Okay. And then the last thing that I'll screen share is this last piece. And then we'll just, again, kind of chat and answer whatever questions you have. Um, so I was talking already about this, but um, we have the, what we call the full-time MSW program, which is a two-year program. If you go full-time, um, we have, we do have a part-time program. So if you're working or if you just um, need to go part-time or would like to go part-time, you can certainly do that and get your MSW part-time. That typically takes about four years. Uh, I talked already about the MSW Advanced Standing Program, which is one year in order to get your master's. Um, But I should say that's one very consolidated year. So you finish with me with the undergrad program um, in May. And then within two weeks, I want to say you have about a two week break. But then about two weeks later, you'll start your advanced standing program. So you actually start the advanced standing program um, usually at the end of May or beginning of June over the summer. And then you go all the way through again until May. Um, Of course, having like the standard, um, you know, the the standard breaks for students and stuff, the two week breaks here and there. Um, But I should say that because I think a lot of times people assume that the advanced standing program happens in the fall it actually doesn't so um we end in may and then you'll start end of may beginning of june for the advanced standing program but then you're done the following may uh we have a phd in social work program uh and i'm in it and so is alice (laughs) so if you have questions about that you can ask us um and we have lots of dual degrees which i think is so exciting to always bring up we have the joint msw but also other stuff so we have um a joint MSW in Masters in Public Health, a joint MSW PhD, which Alice can tell you about, a joint MSW in JD, which is the um, law degree, and then a joint MSW and um, MA in criminal justice. So if you're ever interested in kind of a dual degree program, you can certainly do that. Um, And again, it's worth noting we have a non-degree program, which it sounds like both of you want to be social workers and you pretty much know what you want to do. So it doesn't really apply to you, but we do have a non-degree program. Um, and so this is me. So we will make sure that you get this. Um, you know what, the way that I'm going to make sure you get this presentation is I'm going to pop it in the chat. Um, but this is me. Um, and so I should have put Alice on here too. Alice, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize, um, I didn't realize, but I should have put your information on here as well. Um, but this is me. Okay. I'm going to pop this in the chat. Thoughts, questions, concerns. Let's hear it people. You pretty much answered all of mine. Okay. Um, so now I'm I'm assuming uh I'll probably get an email or some phone call saying like, hey, we, we <laughs> um love you, but maybe not right, maybe not yet. <laughs> maybe not yet, but sometime in the future, which is fine. I was planning on leaving anyway. Um so I'll just go through the process differently. So I'm glad I <laughs> glad I did this webinar. <laughs> a whole different impression. So thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm so glad to hear that that hasn't dissuaded you because I know like sometimes when we have a focus and we have something that we want to do and like, that's, that's what I wanted. And it's hard to kind of think about other routes. But um, again, I think this positions you again, even you probably had a really strong application, but now you could have an even stronger one because now you'll have even more classes and you'll be able to potentially do CPSP and other things that will make it an even stronger application. Anything else? It's taking forever to upload. It says that it's coming. So <laughs> it's, it should be coming. Here it is. Um, it's now in the chat. So I'm happy to share that presentation with you just so that you can kind of look at it at your leisure. Um, I, of course, ask that, you know, don't disseminate that, don't change it or anything like that. Just look at it. (laughs) It's for your information about the program. Anything else from Michelle, from Shannon? Alice, thoughts? If you have any questions beyond the BSW program, just theoretical, 
Uh, I primarily work in admissions on the MSW and a little bit on the PhD side. I can answer those as theoretical as well. We can also answer questions having gone through them. You know, if you're thinking about that route in advance, uh, we're happy to talk about that. Or working in the field. Um, mm -hmm. Before coming into the program, I worked in Child Protective Services in Albany County, so I can tell you about that. Um, I didn't know that. Wow. Yep, that's that's how I came here. It's uh, mm -hmm. Salome Rahim, who was one of our mm -hmm. professors before she left, came and uh, was doing some in-service teaching where I was working uh, and told me to come apply to the program. So you never know how we get students here. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That. And a lot of our instructors do that. They're still actively working in the community. Yeah. That's really one of the beautiful things about our location in Albany. Mm -hmm. We're really engaged in the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, take a look. It sounds like you already have, but if you haven't had a chance to actually take a look at the faculty and staff pages, take a look at who we are. Look at the kinds of research we're doing, um, the kinds of classes that are being taught, uh, because I think especially as an undergrad, and again, if you're thinking towards your master's degree, you're gonna be in the program for two years undergrad, a year in advanced standing. So that's three years that you're gonna be in the school. Um, it's a lot of time to be able to build connections, to build community. Um, but if there's a specific goal or a specific professor that you know you wanna work with, if there's some research as an undergrad that you wanna start doing, um, just take a look, you know, take a look at who we are and the kinds of research and, and the areas that we practice in. I think that um, that can also maybe help you um, position yourself really well for whatever future you want. Uh, I don't know if you'll know this because you're not, I, actually you might, but I'll ask it anyway. <laughs> so if I, if I like now that I have to, I guess go, I would probably do a psych major would be what I would be coming in as. Um, would I get like a, I guess a shoot back, like, oh, you have to reapply through the portal. That's how I did my application to you, the school before I did the whole supplemental application. I did through the like portal. Um, I I never got like a, hey, you're in, but I did get the, oh, okay, now do the supplemental application, which made mm -hmm. me think, all right, so they must be like, all right, she doesn't look too bad. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so would I get like a shoot back of like, okay, just do the portal again and this time put psychology as your major or would they just change that once I'm like accepted in there? If that made sense. <laughs> it made sense. In okay. my experience, and so this this may or may not be, and I have to probably do research on this for you. Um, in my experience, I work with someone very particular um, and we have little bins. So like she will drop people who are appropriate, she'll pre-screen. So people who already meet our criteria and are appropriate for us to start reviewing, she'll drop it in our bin. And so if she sees that you don't have enough credits or if she sees that you're somehow not appropriate, you might not even get filtered into our bin. Um, so then she would be, be kind of telling you like, Oh, you have to pick it. You have to pick a different major for now. If she says that, you'll know why. You'll know it's because of credits. Um, but so that's my experience. But if there's a different answer to that, I will let you know. Okay. Thank you. Yes, of course. That's been my experience most of the time too. Is that usually, very rarely do students get flat out rejections. Yeah. Um. And if they do, they, there's a reason why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it'll probably just be like, hey, can't do that major. Want to pick another? Mm -hmm. Which I'm totally fine with. I, yeah, I'm sure they wouldn't <laughs> reject me. Mm -hmm. uh, but thank you. I just wanted to ask. Yeah, if you completed the full application and that just needs to be a different drop down. Mm -hmm. We have that happen all the time in the MSW yeah. when people apply to a dual degree and accidentally click the wrong drop down. We have to go fix oh, it yeah. back in. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. I bet. <laughs> Computers. Okay, so um, so just to be sure, uh, so when I because I haven't submitted my actual like to this do Albany in itself application. When I submit my application, I have they when I I don't know. If, they had a section to select the major I want. I'm pretty sure they probably did. But 
if they send a supplemental, do I do it since I'm not ready to apply to the BSW program yet? Or can I just leave it alone and let them know that I'm intended to be a social work major or social welfare major? That's a good question. Let me think. Because it's only because the way um, Michelle made it sound as if like she submitted her application to mm -hmm. UAlbany itself and they knew that she was trying to be a social work major. So they sent her the supplemental. She completed mm -hmm. the supplemental, but obviously we know now that she's not ready to be a BSW candidate. Um, right. So I'm, I'm just trying to see how that works. But if you don't have an answer, obviously, I don't know when it happens. Yeah, I would still say to try to try to apply still as a social, where it, uh, social welfare intended major, um, just so that you're kind of on the right track. If they kick you the supplemental application, um, you could always, I, I think the application itself um, goes through, like I think you have to, and Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you have to actually upload each piece yourself. Like it's just, the supplemental is just kind of information about like who maybe my recommender is and things like that. Um, but you have to actually submit your own essay. You have to submit your own resume. So you could always potentially just do the supplemental and not submit all of that stuff. But I'm not, again, I'm not really. My understanding was that it was a PDF. PDF. The supplemental was a PDF and then they submitted. Gotcha. Um, is that how it went, Michelle? Yeah, so I'll, I'll just walk you through my whole thing. So I yeah, went on to Albany's <laughs> website and I was a transfer. So I did the application through the portal. It was like 10, 10 basic questions about you. Nothing to do with social welfare at all. Mm -hmm. I put uh, social welfare as my major. And then like maybe a couple weeks later, I got an email in my inbox from you, Albany, saying, hey, here's your application login. We want you to create an application portal. I did that. And in my portal, that's where the supplemental application for school social welfare was. And it's just in your portal. And I would go in there and yeah, it is like, okay, put your PDF of your resume, put your PDF of your personal essay and list, you know, two, two of your references. And you could go in and out of it as much as you want. That's what I did. And then I just submitted it through the portal. And then it was like, all right, it's all taken care of. And I would just get emails. So that's kind of what I did. Mm. okay at any point sorry go ahead Shannon I'm sorry um because I applied I'm applying through common apps so it looks different yeah. for me yeah. so that's why I was kind of a little confused so yeah. I'll see how that goes because then because I know even like I literally had to email the admissions office earlier today because there wasn't even a section on common app for a personal statement and recommendation and well the person I emailed they said that you don't need that for transfer applications so I was a little confused because I know usually like when you are applying to schools, those are things you need. So I'll just, you know, see when it happens, when I submit my application. Yeah, and I'm imagining too, when you do submit the application, there's probably going to be like a um, an email that pops up or something, like something that if you have questions with your application, contact this person. Um, so that might be something where like in, do your intended um, and then see, kind of see what happens if, if you ever get the, the PDF and stuff, but then potentially just contact, um, once you're, once you're done with your application, if you have questions, like contact that email to kind of ask about credits and does that make sense? But I'll look, I'll also look behind the scenes. I just don't know. So I'll do some digging and if I get an answer, I will let you know. Um, I'll see if my, I'll see. I'll see what I can come up with. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Any questions? Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love us. I love our program. So I love being able to talk about it. Um, and I think for me, what really stands out is we really are a community. It's a smaller program. So it's really nice. There's a lot of professor like one on one attention. Um, I noticed that the classes, they're, they're pretty small classes. We really only admit 25 to 30 each year. 
So you're going to be in a class with like 25, 30. Um, and that's it. I mean, the whole major is never more than like 60 students. Um, and so that really allows for a really nice community. Um, and so that's what I love about us. I love our community. I love how everybody knows each other, how everyone's trying to help out with each other. Professors at the undergrad level really do actually care about you and they get to know you. Um, and it's, I think it's just, uh, it's a really nice community. So I'm thankful that you took your time to learn about our community. And I'm really hopeful that we'll be able to have both of you on the program. Thank you so much. Yeah, Absolutely. thank you. Thank you for answering our questions. <laughs> that was helpful. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm sorry if I didn't have the best answers, but I have a couple that I'm still going to investigate. So I will get back to you if I have good answers for what you asked. <laughs> thank you. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy the night. Go have some dinner. Fill your bellies. <laughs> have a good night. Holistic you care. Too. Holistic care. <laughs> Super important. Thank you. Hehehehe. <laughs>